I was at that time commuting between the Des Moines office of the Register and Tribune and the New York Tribune on a contract which specified a month's turnabout with each publication. It took uh, 36 hours to get from one drawing board to the other and three cartoons to be made in advance in order to span, span the gap. The day before I was to uh, hop the train was always a hectic one, and with the telephone disconnected, it was my habit to shut myself in the shut myself in with strict orders not to be disturbed. It was on one of those days that I had uh, dimly heard several knocks at the outer door of my office. Late at, late in the afternoon, I heard through inter- through two intervening closed doors the agitated voice of the managing editor calling my name. He had come up three times to tell me that uh, Theodore, Ro- Theodore Roosevelt had died that morning at nine o'clock. It was now getting late, and he thought I ought to make a cartoon on the on the subject for the m- next morning paper. The news shocked me into an emotional coma, as it did a great many people. It was a, it was a subject which demanded a supreme effort and there were only two and a half hours left before the deadline in the engraving department in order to have a plate ready for the morning issue, period. Not a moment. There was not a moment to lose. I couldn't think of a thing, dash, dash, not anything at all, period. I looked at the blank sheet of cardboard in front of me in utter despair, and more to be making a mark on that haunting empty sheet of paper than... Because I had anything in mind, anything fitting in mind, I started uh, sketching in the figure of Roosevelt on horseback, turning in his saddle and waving to me as we had parted after a horseback ride together the last time I had seen him at Oyster Bay, Long Island. Certainly that did not embody any fitting memorial to uh, one of the most uh, stimulating public figures in that generation. I threw it on the floor and took a new sheet of cardboard and started drawing a funereal wreath tied with crepe and and the head of uh, TR drawn in the center. That was no good either. And several others followed, period, completely stumped. I sat gazing blankly at my futile pimps cluttering the floor. When the idea struck me that I might possibly add to that uh, first sketch a trail into the great beyond and and allowed it to be presumed that Roosevelt was waving goodbye not to me but to the world. It wasn't what it should be, but uh, in the mental void I was in at the moment, it might be better than nothing. So I sketched in the trail and the vanishing buffalo covered wagons and symbols of pioneer days disappearing in the dim distance. A shadowy sketch of the dome of the national capital filled part of the program, a part of the foreground. It was so inadequate that again it uh, landed on the floor with the rest. Time was up and the M.E., the managing editor and chief of the engineering, uh, chief of the engraving department appeared in my doorway. I had to confess that I had failed, but pointed to the floor and the thin, unshaded lines of the picture representing Roosevelt waving his uh, cowboy hat in farewell. Correction, uh, rough rider hat in farewell. The managing editor picked it up, gave it the once over, saying, quote, No, it isn't very good, is it? End of quote. It was, it was decided that they would uh, dig out one of the best TR photographs in the files, draw a heavy black border around it, and run it four columns wide on the front page. After a few minutes, the managing editor came stampeding to my desk. A recent fire in the, reg- in the Register and Tribune building had destroyed most of the morgue, including every good picture it had contained of the late ex-president. In a panic, he seized the... In a panic, he picked up the sketch of T.R. on horseback, waving farewell, and giving it another disparaging look uh, glance, told me to get busy on another, or the later edition. But what did I want to uh, call this one? Quote, gone with the wind. No. Quote, gone with the... Uh, 
buffalo and covered wagons, end of quote, was the first line that came to our minds. No, that was no good. How about uh, the, quote, long, long trail, end of quote, which was the title of a song everyone was singing at that time? That would do in a pinch. The plan was to run this cartoon on the first, in the first edition only and pull it out in the next for someone, something more in keeping with the occasion, which I must have ready by 9 o'clock. The managing editor had indicated that the wreath of immortelles with lots of crepe and the sketch of the head of Roosevelt in the center had at least the quality of digni- dignity and bereavement. Then dabbing a few more lines on those on the other two half-finished filler cartoons, I hurried to catch my train. Paragraph. At breakfast the next morning in Chicago, I caught a glimpse of an extra edition of the Chicago Evening Post. Chicago Evening Post. The paper was being passed around with evident interest at the next table. And, to my amazement, I saw a man get up from his seat and uh, bring back several copies of the paper which he had... uh, which he passed to the others. There on the front page was the long, long trail cartoon. In my excitement of the night before, I'd forgotten to put in a stop order on the syndicate mailing list, and the, and the mats had evidently gone out to all the subscribing papers. Paragraph. The next day, when I reached uh, the Tribune office, I found the editorial staff examining the engraver's proof of that same cartoon with no evidence of enthusiasm. Yes, they had examined it carefully and decided not to use it. They would like to have me make something impressive, which they could run in the next day's issue, which was the day of the... which was to be the day of the funeral. No one ever tried harder. I made several, which were sent down to the plate makers from which a choice might be made. The brass hats hadn't been able to decide... And when I dropped in just before closing the forms to see which one they had chosen, they were taking a straw vote, a straw ballot, of the uh, reporters and uh, rewrite men in the newsroom. The long, long trail won by a margin of one vote. The papers had hardly been had time to appear on the streets before congratulations began, began to come in. Reprints and special editions of that cartoon on heavy paper, comma, etchings, bronze tablets, and book illustrations have uh, been run of that uh, long, long trail cartoon into several million, and after 30, 38 years, I still, after 38 years, calls still come in for cartoons. Paragraph, when neither the cartoonist himself nor the editors know a successful cartoon when they see it, you may know by what a thin thread the success or failure of a cartoonist hangs by.